Hey guys, what's up? So this is a Red Sonja movie, and I think this is the only Red Sonja movie, but if you look at the movie, it sounds like it's impressive. You know, it's impressive. It's got Arnold Schwarzenegger in it, and it's got Bridget Nielsen. Red Sonja, it's cool that it has Arnold Schwarzenegger in it because Red Sonja is just a female Conan the Barbarian. I, I think that that's why they created the whole character to begin with. It's, um, it's just a female Conan. And it's interesting that they say something about like how she wears like a chainmail bikini and that's all she wears and it doesn't cover anything. But the thing is that Conan just wears like a loincloth and that doesn't cover anything either. Like he has a sword and he wears like basically, you know, these little cloth shorts and he doesn't wear anything else really. I mean, occasionally he appears in armor, but that's really, really rare. Usually he's got a sword and he's like, basically like no shirt, no pants, just some cloth shorts and a belt. <laughs> and that's what he, what, what he, cause what, what he appears in. And Red Sonja, at least she's got like chain mail on her bikini, you know, which is more protection than what he has, you know? He doesn't even have a chain mail shorts, they're just cloth shorts. And so like, you would think this would be a good movie, but it's, oh man, it's just, it's, it's, it's so, I would really want it to, I really wanted this to be a good movie. I don't remember why I got this. I, I think I like, I saw it over a friend's house back, way back in the day. And um, we were like, I, I didn't think it was that great. I really didn't think the movie was that great. And then uh, later on, I was just like, kind of, I was kind of into the Red Sonja comic book which was cool. I think Red Sonja works really, really well in comic book form, but in movie form, I don't see that they made a good movie. I think she's a good character to have a movie about because when done right, you know, like it could be done. It could be done really, really well because look at Conan the Barbarian, you know? Um, they did that one. They did that one really, really well. And there's a lot of female fighters, warriors that are really good. like. When Hercules, The Legendary Journeys came out with Kevin Sorbo, Lucy Lawless played Xena, R Warrior Princess, and that was good. The Warrior Princess TV show was just as good as the, as the Hercules TV show. In fact, I preferred the Warrior Princess Xena TV show to the Hercules one. And I really think that the whole purpose of Red Sonja is so that they can have a barbarian who is a, like a female. It's like, you like the stories of her, of Conan the Barbarian, you like the character, you're behind all the quests and everything like that. But if there's only like so long that you wanna look at a big buffed up like hulking dude where you kind of would rather see like a, a red head or a, wear, a red haired um, woman in a chain mail bikini that wears nothing else and has a sword. You know, it's like that that's a great character. And, and those characters can make amazing, amazing movies. Look at Tarna, the Tarnakian from, um, from Heavy Metal, the motion picture. This thing right there, Tarna the, uh, of Flying Her Bird. That was a cool animation. That was a cool cartoon. Um, it, was, it, wasn't, it was a cartoon, it was, you could say, you could call it a cartoon, but like an animated movie basically, because they didn't just draw her, they had a whole actress do all kinds of like, background effects to, to get her right and everything but the artwork was fantastic and the character was fantastic you know um tarna what is a great female character and i think tarna is a heavy metal character that maybe you know is sort of like a xena not xena uh red sonia but the movie is interesting and i don't think it's all that bad i just don't think it's a good movie but i didn't think it was that bad of a movie it was still okay you know but when you look at this, you really think it's, I think it's just because when you look at it, you think it's gonna be good. You know, you, you expect Arnold, this is, this came after Ar uh, Arnold did um, Conan the Barbarian and after Conan the Destroyer. So like it was the great movie Conan the Barbarian, it was the okay movie of Conan the Destroyer, and it was the lesser okay movie of this. Yeah, Conan the Destroyer was a better movie than the Red Sonja one. <coughs> I don't think it was because of the actors and the actress because Bridget Nielsen plays a good role. It's just that I don't think that the story was a good story. And I think there was nothing really memorable or anything that happened that was interesting in the movie. 
It's just that like, and that was the same thing with Conan the Destroyer. There wasn't a lot going on. Conan the Barbarian had a compelling plot. It was a great plot and it worked really, really well. And the whole movie was just done amazingly. They had a great director, John Milius. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And they had him, he, he directed it. It was written great. The soundtrack was amazing. They took it seriously. You know, the characters really got in, the actors got into character and everything. Conan the Destroyer, they didn't take it so, so seriously, wasn't well written, and because of that, it didn't feel like it was the next step up from Conan the Barbarian. This was the same kind of thing, where it wasn't well written. The, like, actors can only do how what they're directed to do and what is written in the, in the screenplay to say, and the plot is the plot, and the writing is the writing, and, and I think it's all that, because... Arnold Schwarzenegger is the kind of actor where you have a great movie, he's going to really, really play it really, really well. Look at The Terminator, you know, that that was a good plot. That was a good story. That, Total Recall, um, The Running Man, a lot of good plots, a lot of good stories. Um, and Arnold, like, when you give him a good role and a good director and a good plot, he really aces it, you know. He really goes to the next level and really, like, communicates it because it's a great story. It's something that's already there. It's like, it's a great movie. And when Arnold's in it, it becomes better because Arnold makes it better. But when the movie's not written well, the best actors, it doesn't matter. Like, the, the movie isn't good. It can have great actors in it, but the movie isn't good, you know? Like, well, fortunately, like, from what I've seen, I haven't seen all the Keanu Reeves movies, but the Keanu Reeves movies, like, he's good in the movies. He's a great actor, but then you gotta write a good movie for him. Just like... The first Matrix was a great movie, and then, then the later Matrixes, it was still Keanu Reeves, but it wasn't as powerful as the first movie, which, like, blew everybody away and gave them the newest concept about, you know, being in a computer simulation world that we're not aware of. All this, like, crazy, like, um, ideas and philosophies They just, like, was in that movie, and Keanu Reeves played a good actor. Keanu Reeves played a good John Constantine. So if you guys haven't seen the John Constantine and Keanu Reeves, and you don't think like, I've heard people don't, they don't want to see that movie because they, they're like, oh, he's not really John Constantine. But the guy in the TV show is more of a John Constantine. But yeah, he's more of a John Constantine, but actually Keanu Reeves played a great role as Constantine from the Hellblazer comic books. And so like, you can only, they're only going to be as good as the movie is. So there was no real plot. There was nothing memorable about this one. Um, I'll read the back for you guys um, what this is. And uh, there's some like stuff. Th this DVD is not that bad. Um, it's pretty cool. I like the cover art, right? So at least you get like cover art <laughs> for, for the price of the DVD. And on the inside, like the DVD is like that way. And so uh, on the back, it says, heroes of their time for all time. Danger is my trade. Powerfully built, Kalidor proclaims, based on all his sword-clanging efforts to recover the glowing orb whose magic imperils, imperils the world. Just like, that's like the glowing orb. That's like the, the Loch Nahr from Heavy Metal, the motion picture. It's plain his trade is in demand and thriving. Arnold Schwarzenegger, who muscled his way into screen action lore as Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer, returns to the sword and sorcery realm as Kalidor in Red Sonia. And there's another thing about this one, about him returning as Kalidor in Red Sonia. Why doesn't he just return as Conan the Barbarian in Red Sonia? And it, and it could be like Conan and Red Sonia. Why would they play someone down who already played two Conan movies and is now in a Conan-like role but isn't really Conan? He should be Conan. I, maybe they didn't get the rights, but I don't know. But they should, seriously. I mean, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's like, he even, like, if that was a picture and it didn't say Red Sonja on it, you would say that's Conan the Barbarian. So why not just have him play Conan the Barbarian that he already knows how to play and is a better character and more people are going to watch the movie anyway because it's Conan the Barbarian and, um, and have him meet Red Sonja and have an adventure together instead of, playing a character that like nobody even heard of unless that's part of the old stories that i'm not familiar with so okay so anyway so 
returns in the sword and sorcery realm as Kaldor and Red Sonia, based on stories by Conan creator Robert E. Howard. Bridget Nielsen is flame-haired um, heroine Sonia, leading a glorious quest in a mystical land where fortress wall fortress walls have faces, dinosaur bones form a bridge, a lethal mechanical serpent rives. Swarming million, minions fo uh, follow a vile queen, Sandal Bergman. And yeah, she played the queen and she was evil. She was really evil in this one. That, that, that's, that's a memorable part of the movie, how evil she was. Like you wanted her like, you wanted her ass kicked because she was so evil. And where heroes lay claim to legend. And it's got special features, just like theatrical trailer, subtitles in, in English and French and Spanish, and that's it. It doesn't have anything else. Um, so that's the thing. Why, do, why not put Arnold Schwarzenegger in this movie as Conan rather than Kalidor that no one's ever heard of? Um, unless that's part of the old comics, and I don't know. But I really do think that Red Sonja is best in art. So there's like this book, which is like a art of Red Sonja. And if you just look at it, it's like, she just looks really cool. She looks cool, even with the chainmail bikini and everything, she still looks pretty cool. And if you just like flip through some of these, you'll see a lot of really, really cool pictures of Red Sonja and stuff. And I think that's why like I went, to, I went and just like got the movie because I just thought the character was cool and I was reading the comics at the time, you know, but I'll just show you one more because I don't want to show too much of this. Um, crazy cool stuff. They, they even have this cool comic book where um, she was going on, she was going against uh, the same villain that was in Conan the Barbarian, the guy that turned into the snake. Um, they, I forget his name, something. Um, but anyway, the guy that turned into the snake, the one, the one that the Conan, um, basically they killed his tribe and then he goes back to take vengeance. Uh, God, what was his name? Anyway, so they, um, they had like a, a story with, with, it's interesting because they had the story with Red Sonia and him, the the villain from Conan the Barbarian. So they, so it's the same world, you know, it's the same world, but it's a different like story and stuff like that. So um, in the comic book, it's really cool because like, it's a good comic book because it's just like, it's got, um, it's got a lot of really, really, um, it's just like, it's a good comic book because it's really Conan the Barbarian in female form, which is kind of cool. Cause there's a lot of different comics or, or a lot of different stories where I could see a female character <coughs> coming, up, coming up and being a really cool character. Like uh, for example, in Elric, like a lot of the Elric stories, like the Eternal Champion stories, um, with Michael Moorcock, it's like those, those characters, it would be cool if there was a female eternal champion aspect. Cause they were all like, all of his stories were like aspects of the eternal champion, but it was good if there was a female one. Um, and there's a lot of different characters that are really, really cool as female characters, like, um, sort of, uh, but in, in comics, basically like they would take, especially, um, in certain, artists that, that make very, very compelling females, like uh, Louis Royo really draws a lot of female warriors and female, um, female like lead roles and then female um, people that, female like characters that really take over the story. Um, even like Druna is a female character that, that that's that's good in the story. And it's the thing is this, a cup, for a couple of reasons, it's good to have a female Conan the Barbarian because I think it'll also work as another way to tell that story. And I also think that it'll appeal to women more, you know, because Conan the Barbarian, I mean, yeah, sure, people like Conan the Barbarian, but they're not thinking women so much. Like if you look at um, a lot of different lead roles that have been played as men, all of a sudden they change it to a woman. They, they make a female lead role playing that same character, 
you know, like you would see in um, in, in, in Tarna, in, in, in a lot of different places, like in Heavy Metal, the motion picture, Tarna was a badass female character. And she was very, very close to, she looked very, very close to Red Sonja. So basically she also walked around in like high boots and like, and kind of like a little like, you know, bikini and panties pretty much, you know? And then she had some like leather armor and stuff and a, and a sword. And she also rode a bird, which was pretty cool. And so um, it's just fun to see that. It's fun to see like, I, you know, there's only like so much like male stories or male driven stories that you can get behind. And you would just think, you know what? This would be a cool story if it was female. And what's interesting about Red Sonja is there's no difference to like her than him. I mean, she, she's really not any different than Conan the Barbarian in personality or anything, a little bit in personality, but that's just because, you know, she's gotta be a little bit of, of, of a different in personality. And Conan, just to kind of separate her from Conan, you know, um, so ju just to make her a little bit original and stuff like that. But she's basically just a female Conan. And they did that a lot, you know? People were just thinking, well, is this story possibly told in a female form? And with Conan the Barbarian, yeah, it could be told like as a, you know, in, in a story where nothing is different about the story except the main character is female. And they do that a lot with a lot of different stories. Even with uh, Hercules and Xena, they're honestly the same character. It's just one is female and one is male. Like the stories are the same. Like even the supporting characters are the same. Where, you know, like, Hercules would have a sidekick and then he would also deal with the same other characters like Ares and Mars and Aphrodite and the, those, all of those characters, the little, the, the, the Greek gods that kind of show up in Hercules, the legendary journeys. And, and basically Conan is a very, very Hercules character. And so you would have, you know, instead of having Hercules, you would have, uh, you would have, um, Xena warrior princess. And she was just a female character. She also had her sidekick. She also had Aphrodite and, and, and Ares and all that same thing. The adventures were the same. It was sword and sorcery. The backdrop was the same. Everything was the same about those two stories, except I found that just by talking to people that Xena appealed to more women than Hercules did. And the thing about, about female characters that are sort of like that kind of sword and sorcery characters that are like the ma male characters is that the men would like the male characters and the female characters, while the women would be more into the female characters. Like, I don't see a lot of Conan the Barbarian fans who are women, but there are a lot of Xena fans who are women. And so... I think it's just better, it's just another way to tell the same story, and I, just, I really do think that, I don't know if, if Robert E. Howard like intended to have this kind of like, if he actually did create Red Sonja, because it's on the back, it just says, it's based on the stories of Robert E. Howard. You know, which means that like, basically it's based on the guy who created Conan the Barbarian. And and so, they he would create Red Sonia. Um, and it's got some interesting, interesting, um, like, fun, you know, but I, I do think, though the characters work, and it works in a comic book, and it works in, uh, in a movie, but, you know, the story just has to be good, and I find that, like, the two comics, the thing about those comics are, and I think the same thing that happened in the movie is that they're basically... They're just like the whole thing about those characters is they have a sword and they get into sword fights and they're like bigger and badder than everybody and they fight monsters and, and they always get hired to um, destroy some bad guy who did something to somebody, you know? And basically if you read the, <coughs> if you read the Conan comics, it's basically like, yeah, there's different adventures, 
but there's not a lot of story. It's just the same story. You know, it's just different, different monsters. And so it works in a comic book because you get to see the monsters drawn on paper and that's fun to see. And you get to see the whole sword fight between the hero and the monster, which is fun to see. And then you kind of get a lot of sort of like these little um, personality twitches or like, you know, you, you get you get into the, the character's personality and some really clever dialogue between that character and other characters that are happening. And I think that that's what really was lacking in Red Sonja the movie, where, I, you know, they're probably, I don't know if they're going to do another Red Sonja the movie, but they should. They should seriously do another Red Sonja the movie, but if they're going to do it, they should do it because there's a story they want to tell because I know that Red, Red Sonia though for the time that it came out it wasn't unusual for this kind of movie which I consider Red Sonia a B movie and I it was I don't even think it was ever intended to be more than a B movie it was just very very common for movies that came out at that time to be B movies especially movies like Red Sonia when Conan the Barbarian came out I thought it was going to be a B-movie. I think everyone else thought it was going to be a B-movie. And they were surprised. They were like, wait a minute. Because even when you watch the whole movie, you're still thinking you're watching a B-movie. Until the whole movie kind of hits you at once, but you were like, wow, wait a minute. That was a great movie. It wasn't just like it was a B-movie and I enjoyed it. It was like, no, that was a really great movie. They made a great movie and that's amazing. And this is just a B-movie. It could have been better than a B-movie. But it's just that, like, at the time, it was just, it just falls into that, that hole of B-movies. Because at the time, what would happen is there'd be one good movie, and there'd be, like, ten other movies that try to copy that movie and completely fail. Like, there was a ninja movie that came out in the 80s, and it was a good movie. It was about ninjas, and it was, like, an interesting story about ninjas. And it was, the story was there, the plot was there, the characters was there. There were like sword fights and ninjas fighting other ninjas and that was cool. And then 10 other ninja movies come out because that one's, that one's successful and they all suck because they weren't trying to do anything except imitate another movie so that they can kind of like bank in, you know, they can make money from the success of this movie. So it's like, oh, this movie was successful. So now we're going to make um, a bunch of other movies that are just like it to hope that they'll be as, as successful, but of course they don't. It's only the first movie that's good, that's ever successful. So they made Conan the Barbarian, which was amazing. Conan the Destroyer, which was okay. And then this one, which was like a little bit disappointing. And it's just so weird that Arnold Schwarzenegger can have really good roles and then really bad roles. Like he was okay in this and so was Bridget Nielsen, but just two characters even if they're the main characters, is not really enough to make a complete movie. Um, and I think that Red Sonja, even though it works in comic books and on comic book form, and the same thing with Conan works in comic book form, I feel like that story, it just gets old very quickly unless there's some new and innovative plots, there's some new um, ideas that go into that story, some new characters that really work in that story. Um, and if there, you know, there's gotta be new things in that story because if you go and buy a Conan comic, it might be fine. It might be fun to, to read, but then if you buy another Conan comic a few months later, it's, it's fun to read, but it's just so similar in every aspect as every other Conan comic that ever came out. So you can kind of read it for a while. But then after a while, you put it down because nothing is changing. And you read it because, you know, you see all the sword fights and you see all of the adventure and everything and the monsters. But, you know, it's, you can only be entertained by that for so long until you want original content, original content. And that's the thing with Red Sonja is like, you want original content. You want something that's written as a good movie and not just based on the character and the adventure of the character and the character having the personality of the character. You really need 
it to be written well, shot well, directed well, um, all that stuff. It had Bridget Nielsen and Ronald Schwarzenegger, but it always, doesn't always mean it's a good movie. Like, to get a good movie, you gotta get everything right, and then it's a good movie. You know, you can't just be like, oh, we're just gonna do this and it's gonna be a great movie. Now you, have to, you have to do all of that stuff. It's gotta come together right. And the magic has, has to happen between the characters, between the storyline, between the effects, the editing, and the directing, and the writing, and all that stuff to make it a great movie. I like Red Sonja, the character. Um, it'd be cool if they made another movie. I like the comic book in Red Sonja, but I feel like the stories really run out pretty, pretty quickly. What do you guys think of Red Sonja <laughs> with the movie or the comic book or the art? I pretty personally like the art more than any of the, any of the other stories. But let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and subscribe. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in another video. Later.